Good morning. I'm Jessica Hathaway. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of National Fisherman, and I have here with me today Mike Fortner, who is a West Coast and Alaska sales rep for Cummins Marine, as well as a longtime Bristol Bay drift gill netter. Welcome, Mike. Thank you so much for joining me today. Good morning, Jess. Thank you for having me from the beautiful Pacific Northwest today. Yeah, it's gorgeous out there. Um, not so much here today. I'm on the East Coast, you're on the West Coast, and I just want to note that it is very early for you out there, so thanks again. <laughs> um, so, Mike, you grew up in Homer, Alaska. You went crab fishing in the Bering Sea for a long time, and now you fish Bristol Bay. So we're going to get to the upcoming Bristol Bay season in a little bit, but first I want to talk to you a little about the boat building so sector and what you're seeing in the Pacific Northwest. Yeah, so the boat building sector here, um, you know, we have a lot of a lot of OEMs here who build a lot of the commercial, you know, fishing boats for Alaska and, and the Pacific Northwest region here. And, you know, we've actually seen, we haven't seen a huge impact. Uh, there are some boat builders who with this, as soon as this COVID thing hit, and then each state has kind of implemented their own mandates on what to do uh, in terms of shutdowns and social distancing and um, quarantining and there are some yards that you know they called me and said hey we're gonna we're gonna shut down for two weeks per the governor's you know order the interesting part is we have a lot of oems here who are building military and government contracts so that is considered an essential service and those all of those have stayed open uh, there's only a few of them that actually closed for a little bit because they weren't, it was, they were just building commercial boats in one of them even called me and said, you know, we could stay open because we technically are kind of essential building a commercial boat, but they, they opted to close for two weeks. Oh, wow. So what I'm hearing from a lot of commercial Marine builders is that um, they really haven't slowed down with COVID-19 shutdowns. We did have a story about, what they're doing to stay extra clean and doing extra rounds of cleaning and social distancing in the shop and meeting every morning to talk about what's happening. Um, so is that what you're seeing out there? And, and what are the trends um, for, for boats that you're seeing built for Bristol Bay specifically? You know, uh, there are definitely lots of implementations. We've gotten emails from every one of our OEM boat builders who has remained open We've gotten emails and letters saying, hey, if you do need to come by, here's the protocols, you know, call first, make sure it's, it's, you really need to come by here. It's something that we can't do over the phone or email. Uh, if you really need to stop by, uh, there are, there's a, basically a set of rules, just like anything in, in this new world we live in. Uh, the, the safety procedures, the masks, the gloves, the, you know, hand sanitizer, uh, you know, in the Bristol Bay world, it, it's so, this is what's so interesting about Bristol Bay is uh, everyone gets home from Bristol Bay in July. So all the new boats are built between August and March. Well, COVID hit in what, January, February-ish, we started to kind of see it. A lot of these boats were two thirds of the way done. So I was really concerned in March, February, March, when this really hit, okay, what's this gonna do? Cause everything went on a shutdown. But for the most part, Everybody has maintained, they've kept going. The Bristol Bay boats have continued to, to be produced. However, at a slower pace, I talked to one of our customers yesterday who we're gonna go sea trial his new Bristol Bay boat on the 8th or the 12th here in about two weeks. So that's and May 12th. He goes, I'm about two weeks behind schedule because everything got slowed down. There was, you know, the supply chain down the line, there was a lot of supply chain issues just from people who closed and, and I get it so everyone's trying to reel back and and make do with what they have but fishermen are innovative uh you know we're the, we're the kings of taking a toothpick and duct tape and building a bridge out of it so <laughs> they they found a way to get it done and and to my knowledge every Bristol Bay boat that we have being built right now with Cummins Power it, they're all going to make it to the bay this summer wow that's great news that's really phenomenal um, so tell me a little bit about those boats that you're seeing being built right now. I know that we, we chatted earlier about the power that's going into those boats. Can you 
can you um, talk a little bit about that? <laughs> so Bristol Bay is, I, you know, yes, I, as you mentioned earlier, I do actively fish Bristol Bay. I have my own operation that I fished since 2010. My brother-in-law and I own our boat together. And uh, I am a fisherman at heart. I'm a fisherman who works for Cummins and I sell marine engines for them, but I am a fisherman through and through. So 20 years ago, Bristol Bay boats were built with a, a single engine, you know, 300 horsepower. That's pretty much all you needed. And then you, as it's evolved, the length limit in Bristol Bay is still 32 feet. You can't go longer than 32 feet. That's the regulation in Alaska. It doesn't matter how wide you are, but you can only go 32 feet long. So as the fishery has evolved more and more, now you get, you've got 32 foot long by eight foot wide, and now you're out to 17, 18 foot wide. So these new boats that we're seeing built are getting wider. They can't get longer, but they're definitely getting wider. And as you get wider, they want more power. So what we saw back in the 80s and 90s where guys were building a single engine boat with three, 400 horsepower, which was a lot back then, now we're seeing twin engine boats with 600 horsepower per engine. So we've got multiple 1200 horsepower I mean, those salmon are fast. You have, I mean, you, you got to keep up with them. So 1200 horsepower is really kind of become the norm. Uh, as it stands right now today, we have 10 brand new twin engine Cummins boats being built for Bristol Bay, all with twin 600 horsepower. So it is how the fishery has evolved is, is really fascinating. And the, you know, now we literally have people coming up to me asking about doing a triple. We were single engine, it's twin jet now. We really, we have a design in process now with triple 550 horsepower Cummins and we have some interest uh, for some guys that are looking at building that. Wow, that, that's, that's a lot of power. So that is a lot of power. The top speed for, so let's say, let's say you're loaded and you're heading yep. back. What are you looking at for top speeds um, with a triple 550. <laughs> Scary fast. <laughs> uh, so the triple, actually, the, the preliminary design that we've come up with with triple Cummins, right now we're over, we're over 50 knots light. Wow. And we light. are okay. light. And then when you have fish on board, we actually, the, the preliminary numbers are coming in at around 30 knots when you're loaded, which is... Wow. That's I mean, still my phenomenal. Bay boat now, oh, I go seven knots in my personal boat, yeah. whether I'm loaded or not. So to me, 10 knots would be just fantastic. So all these engines that I sell into Bristol Bay and a bunch of these customers, they all go flying by me and wave on the way by. So, but <laughs> it's okay. We, uh, you know, the biggest thing with bay boats is it's, Bristol Bay is ultra shallow. I mean, you're fishing in, you know, 10 feet of water or less almost all season, really. Uh, and multiple times you're up in the shallows and less than a foot or two of water. So the biggest thing for a lot of these fishermen, because Bristol Bay, the districts aren't massive, you're not running 40 or 50 miles. The widest spot is maybe, you know, 18 miles at the most. So they give up the top speed by changing jets and impellers to lose a couple of knots of top speeds, but to gain the low end thrust, because the biggest thing for them is to get weight up on step and out of the shallows and get to the tender quickly. So the boat that we just see trialed, the, the Not Guilty here on, um, which is a great name for a Bristol Bay boat, the FB Not Guilty, my favorite. Uh, that boat topped out right at 40 knots when it was light. If we would have had different impellers in there, we probably, it would have probably been pushing mid to high 40s, but how, I mean, how 40 knots is, you can get anywhere at 40 knots pretty dang quick. So giving up the top end speed to gain that low end thrust. Uh, the ultimate goal for a lot of these guys is they want to be able to have 10 to 15,000 pounds of salmon on the boat and still jump up on plane and do 20 to 25 knots. Yeah, they're going to be showboating this summer for sure. Oh my gosh, it's going to be fun to watch. <laughs> yeah. yeah, get some pictures for us. I will, I will. <laughs> it sounds like fun. So I know, you know, the marine industry, you guys like to be hands-on, as do we, and especially with new boat launches. So how are you participating in sea trials these days? 
Well, these days under the quarantine, um, it is it is so nice to be able to get out and go for a boat ride. Uh, and all these Bristol Bay boats are are becoming finished over these next few weeks. So we're at that point of the year where there's a lot of Bristol Bay sea trials. And really, I go on every sea trial that I can. If I'm available to go, you know, who doesn't want to go for a boat ride? I'm I'm up for a boat ride any day. So I go as much as I can. And this year, probably more than most years, we have a, a large group of fishermen who are building new boats and they are very hands-on. Now, most fishermen are hands-on to a degree. Uh, mechanically minded, can fix things and kind of make, you know, they can get you home. But not as many are eager to just go build their own boat because that's a whole nother overwhelming project. But the group of fishermen that are building new boats this year for Bristol Bay, a lot of them are that savvy. And so there was a lot of kind of, they were the general contractor, if you will, subbing a lot of their boat out. They didn't just send it to a boat builder and say, hey, build me a boat, call me in nine months when it's done. I mean, they were directing traffic. They were there saying, I want this tab here. I want this designed like this. And, you know, as a fisherman, the longer you fish on your whatever boat you currently have, there's things that you're like, boy, I it would really be beneficial if I moved this here, if I did this. So there, there's a very large group of hands-on boat builders this year um, that are building for Bristol Bay. Yeah, that's really cool to hear how the industry is changing with this generation of fishermen building boats who maybe have built a boat before for the bay, or you know, finally they have some money to do things exactly the way they want and they're not, they're not messing around. It's pretty exciting. Yep. Yeah. Um, so speaking of the Bay, I know you, you've already shipped your supplies up to Knack right? Mm -hmm. um, so what are your plans for the season so far? My plans for the season are undetermined at the moment. Um, I did ship all of my supplies up to Bristol Bay and I shipped them up on the barge to all, all of our groceries. I have not made plane tickets yet, so I'm not sure when I'm going to go up. I'm kind of waiting <clears throat> right now the state of Alaska has the travel mandate until May I think it's 24th is the quarantine period so with all the things going on I'm not a hundred percent sure <clears throat> um, how or what that's gonna look like so I'm waiting to I'll make tickets probably last minute this year normally by now my tickets are already done I'm usually flying up there June 5th there's the Bristol Bay Fish Expo up there that I Cummins participates in and that got canceled naturally and so as soon as that got we are um, I really just kind of stepped back to look at what this whole thing is going to look like in the end and nobody knows so in my mind right now I'm probably thinking I'm gonna fly up there in mid-June probably uh, get the boat ready put it in the water it's not ideal normally you fly to Bristol Bay and you want to spend you know, two, three, four days, getting your boat ready, going through everything. If I absolutely had to, I could throw my groceries and nets on my boat, be on the trailer and in the water in, you know, less than a day if I had to. Not ideal, but this season, everyone's saying, I just want to get in the water. I just want to, you know, being on land this summer in Bristol Bay is, uh, it's going to be very restrictive, understandably so. So, the place that you're unrestricted really is on the water where everyone really just needs to be. So that's more than likely what will happen is a lot of guys will get there, throw their stuff on their boat, get me in the water. Right. Everybody's going to get down to brass tacks pretty quick. Yes. Yes. So um, speaking of getting everything on the boat, can you talk to me a little bit about um, what you know that marine supply, local marine supply businesses are doing in Bristol Bay this year? They're doing things a little differently. Yes. Yeah, so, you know, there are really only three main parts stores, if you will, in Bristol Bay, Seattle Marine, LFS, and Napa. And, and there's my dogs. Welcome to life. <laughs> okay. uh, welcome to life in quarantine, folks. You've got kindergartners and dogs that are climbing walls and barking. Uh, sometimes I feel like I'm in a zoo. We are. <laughs> the parts supply stores for Bristol Bay this summer are that it's going to be delivery only from what i've been told so they are shipping up or 
the, the stores are bringing up a lot of parts runners, if you will. And I know that Seattle Marine Supply actually sent out a, a notice saying, hey, when you're in the Bay this summer, don't come by the store. Call us if you need a part. If you call before 3 p.m., we'll deliver that part to you that day. If you call after 3 p.m., we will deliver the part to you the next day. Yeah. Uh, it's, you know, there are 800 boats in Macnick. 900 boats. I mean, there's a lot of boats in Macnick. And there's only one CMAR with a phone line. So unless they get, it, it's going to be very challenging, I believe, overall. But it's, you know, it's going to be, it's going to be what's, it's going to be this summer. And we're just going to have to live with it and deal with it. And there are people I know right now that are saying, hey, I'm going to grab more than what I need down here at home, Seattle or where Anchorage, wherever you're at. And they're shipping extra supplies up hydraulic fittings, hydraulic hose, things that you wouldn't normally bring up just so that you have it because it'll be a lot easier. Yeah, it's going to be like old school fishing on the bay. You're going to be going back <laughs> a lot. Yes, here. <laughs> yeah. yes. exactly. <laughs> yeah, well, that's good to hear. I'm glad that they've got a plan and sounds like you're working on your plan. Have you filed any paperwork with the state of Alaska yet? I have not yet. So we definitely got, I got a couple emails, one from our boat yard. So the boat yard that I store in, in Naknik, we got an uh, email from them with all the paperwork saying, hey, here's the state of Alaska paperwork. Here's the insurance paper I need. Um, I have not personally filled it out yet. I, I noticed I got a text message from one of my Bristol Bay group fishermen and he texted me a picture of the his captain's log now with all of his paperwork filled out and he was so organized. I was, I was like, oh, I'm proud of you. Uh, I personally have not done it yet, but I, I'll, I will get to that here at some point. Yeah, well, I wish you good luck. I really <laughs> appreciate you sitting down with us today, Mike. I thank you so much for taking the time. I wish you and everybody else a safe and healthy season on the Bay. And I hope that we can connect at Pacific Marine Expo in the fall. Fingers crossed. I, I hope so. Thank you very much for having me, Jess. I appreciate it. Thanks, Mike. Take care.